So you know how I was all excited for the Tanabata festival that's coming up? My boyfriend says he's already got plans. Oh, by the way, did you ever finish reading that manga I lent you? I got someone else who wants to borrow it. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it worked. Yeah. Doesn't look like anyone's talking about Natsume anymore. Then, all's as it should be. Attaining fame through some deceptive power doesn't fit his image. This wouldn't have been possible without you being there to open his eyes, Yusuke. You really took charge today, Inari. It was rather touching. Yeah, it was pretty emotional, huh? A real work of art. Thank you, everyone. I can feel a strong bond with my friends. However, we're not finished just yet. We must confirm whether the change of heart was a success. For now, we'll just have to wait and see how things turn out. Oh. Well, since we've got some free time, can we unwind at a bathhouse or something? Oh, I'm totally beat. Good idea. We can freshen up a little before we head back to the car. You heard him, Sophia. It's all you. Okay, I'll find the best bathhouse in the area. A what? No bathhouse scene? Darn. Okay, kind of darn. Maybe I did want to see it. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I've called this press conference to give an announcement, as well as a formal apology. First, my novel, Prince of Nightmares, was recently bestowed the honor of receiving first place in the Sokaisha Awards. I have decided to give the award back. I've also decided to recall all published copies, not to mention take the necessary steps to refund everyone's money. I'm sure you all want to know my reasons for doing so. The truth is, my book, Prince of Nightmares, only won because of my status as Sogo Natsume's grandson. In short, the competition was fixed. In addition, I've also stolen the work of countless other authors word for word. Lastly, the story I told about writing to inspire a hospitalized girl was nothing but a lie to garner sympathy. This fabrication allowed my book to sell a number of copies it nowhere near deserved. I wish to apologize for this scandal, and I'll start by personally seeing to it that everyone who bought my book is refunded. I promise my writing career ends here. I am deeply sorry for all that I've done to all of you. Uh, hold on, Mr. Natsume. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Hey, time to wrap it up. Get everyone out of here, now. Please, don't interfere. This is my way of taking responsibility. Hey, something doesn't seem right here. Mr. Natsume is the one who put this thing together, right? Do you think the editors were just trying to profit off Mr. Natsume's family name? Uh. Hey! Uh. Uh. Who, who are you? I will not allow this. You... You're the one from the party. I'm so sorry for what I said back then. I will not allow you to cower and run away, Ango Natsume. You intend to make a comeback, do you not? Huh? When you do return to the literary world, I want to see a book with your name on it, not your grandfather's. <gasps> you are going to write a novel that you can be proud of, are you not? I'm actually kind of getting emotional here. You're not alone. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Where are they supposed to be? Once everything is rightfully resolved, I will make my return. Even if there's just one person out there waiting to read my stories. 
No matter what, I will keep writing. I only hope that I can one day save someone's soul the way my grandfather's novel saved mine when I was young. That is why I write. Sheesh, you kids are something else. Barging in on a press conference like that? I know, I was not expecting that. And oh my god, I actually got emotional. Like, I'm having a hard time not crying right now. I didn't just admit that on recording. My apologies. It was imperative that I speak with him. Eh, it's fine. Alright, well, I gotta run. I have to go question Natsume. Oh, right. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't end with just an apology. Senkichi's really doing his job. It's almost like he's an actual cop or something. I am an actual cop. Anyway, it won't take long. So go on and wait for me back at the car. Guess we should get rolling then. Right. We'll leave the rest to him. Do you have a moment? Something about Natsume's been bothering me. What he did was no doubt unforgivable. Nothing will change that. However, was he really like Matarame? No. No, he wasn't really like Matarame at all. Can he truly be called evil like the palace rulers we've confronted in the past? Had he simply ignored his editors, would he have strayed from his path? Or am I perhaps just sympathizing with someone who pursues the arts like myself? What do you think? He wasn't a bad guy. So you think so as well? Then, what is the purpose of these jails? Oh well, I suppose there's no point in thinking on it right this second. Forgive me, I didn't mean to hold you up. We should return to the car as well. After some time, Zidkichi came to the hideout. And that about sums up Natsume's confession. So once people friended him through Emma, they'd become his fans. It's just like what Alice said. And Natsume's smartphone worked the same as Alice's, too. There wasn't anything off about the Emma app or the phone itself. So we got nothing again? I didn't say that. Just like before, there were traces of someone snooping around in there. For real? It's the same as Alice. You're talking about how Alice's smartphone was being monitored by someone, right? So the same occurred with Natsume's phone as well. Well, any idea who it is? Sorry, I got nothing. All I found were traces. So Alice and Natsume were being watched by someone. Hey, Zenkichi, did the police know about that? <sighs> no. The only reason we know this guy exists is because Sakura sifted through Alice's smartphone. So aside from the fact that they both used Emma, this mystery observer is the only thing linking Alice and Natsume together. If the police didn't know that, why would they assume these two cases are related? Well, these are some very peculiar cases. But mainly, it boils down to the nature of the crimes and the timing. The timing? All of the change of heart incidents occurred at roughly the same time, that being within the last three months. Didn't I tell you? Three months ago is around when Emma was released. Well, Emma is being used to perpetrate the crimes, so that makes sense. Hmm. Could somebody be exploiting it? Maybe. But this seems like it'd be pretty difficult for a third party to pull off. That company putting that thing out is suspicious as all hell. What are they called again? Madams? Madis. Well, at least you got the mad part. For what it's worth, I'm investigating on that front as well. Still, we're talking about a major corporation operating on a global scale. You can't just walk in and start poking around without reason. You haven't found anything suspicious yet? <sighs> Not yet, no. At least, nothing's come up from checking the individuals involved. If our mystery observer was connected to Medis, though, then we'd have grounds to conduct an investigation. Hmm... <laughs> Do you think there's someone pulling the strings in this case? We don't know for sure yet. 
The incidents are similar, but they could just as easily be unrelated. <sighs> Guess we'll have to see if the other incidents have any overlap as well. That's one of the basic rules of investigation. Find what the incidents do and don't have in common, then start narrowing things down. For now, looking into the other incidents is our best bet at scoring a lead. This is true. We'll have to do what we can for the time being. And if we look into the other jails and their monarchs, we might learn something new. Then, if we're all done here, I'm heading to Sapporo to see what I can find at our next target. We'll rendezvous on the 8th. I'll contact you the day of. Three days. Should be an easy trip with a car. No need to rush. The target's not even in Japan until then. Oh, right. Wasn't there a festival happening around here soon? Sendai's famous for its Tanabata festivals. Lots of good food lined up, too. Or so I hear. Yes, I did see decorations being put up here and there. Anyway, I'll see you in three days. Don't forget. I guess he wants us to rest up while we can. Gramps is actually a pretty considerate guy, huh? Well, since we're here, should we put on Yukata and go to the festival? Yes, I vote yes. <laughs> Yukata. Uh, I can't help but think of our disastrous fireworks festival last year when we got rained on. That's why we're gonna do it right this time. Besides, we didn't have Futaba or Haru with us back then. Count me in. Going to a festival in a Yukata sounds wonderful. I can't wait. Then we got a plan. Sophia, find us a shop that sells Yukata. I've got four hits. Allow me to direct you. Dude, check out all the boots! As one might expect from Sendai's Tanabata Festival. It's quite lively here. Apparently, the locals call it Tanabata-san. And it's said to have originated from back in Date Masamune's time. Hey, that's the dude from the statue, huh? <sighs> he is not a dude. He is Lord Date Masamune, the one-eyed dragon of Oshu. Jeez, what are you, his retainer or something? Oh, there are so many boots. It's hard to pick what to see first. What do you think? I think it's hilarious that Ryuji is wearing shorts. I know that's a style, but it's not a common one. It's kind of hilarious. Yakisoba. I'm cool with that. I don't know why, but yakisoba from a food stand always tastes so friggin' good! Uh, let's hold off on the food for now. I want to check out all the boots with Lady On first. Speaking of which, ain't those guys here yet? It takes time for a lady to get ready. They're not unrefined apes like the rest of you. Who are you calling an ape? You're the unrefined one, you furball. Well, this furball's got claws, you bonehead! Sorry for the wait. Oh, Lady On, you look absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks, Morgana. Sorry, tying the obi took quite some time. It was worth the wait. Thanks. <laughs> Means a lot hearing that from you. Absolutely picturesque. You've brought us a much-needed air of refinement. Yeah, according to someone, we're about as unrefined as it gets. Wow, Ryuji! That looks really good on you! Even better than your school uniform. You don't gotta try and make me feel better. You made a good choice with that mask, though. Yellow's a good match for this season. I bought a water balloon myself. You gotta get one when you go to a festival. Water balloon? Oh, you mean a yo-yo! No, isn't that called a water yo-yo? Uh, wait a sec. I thought it was yo-yo balloon. No, it's a water balloon. Hmm, what do you call it? I call it yo-yo ma. I don't even know what it is. Uh, so the water balloon was for Taba. Uh, yo-yo or water yo-yo. Here. So... Which is it? <laughs> oh, 
Looks like everyone's having a good time. We should have a little fun ourselves. Why don't we check out the food stands and get something to eat? Uh, sure. I was starting to get hungry since everything smells so good. Look, they've got all the staples. Yaki soba, yakitori, shaved ice. They've even got cognac skewers. Those are huge in Tohoku. What are we waiting for? Charge! Come on, we should get going too. I'm starving. Hell yeah! Let's start from one end and get one of everything. It feels as if we're forgetting the spirit of Tanabata. Though I have no objections. I want to see more of the festival too. Show me how to catch goldfish. I had fun with everyone at the festival. That was so good. Cognac skewers, Ishinomaki yakisoba, Zunda cider. We basically ate our way through Sendai. And it was amazing. Gotta hand it to old man Masamune. He is one cool dude. That's Lord to you. Did I do it right, Yusuke? Am I that predictable? Catching goldfish seems difficult. Is there some sort of secret to catching one? Try to stay calm, then strike without hesitation. The trick is to catch them once you've read their movements. Wow, that's impressive, Mako-chan. I see. We'll get it next time. You're getting a call from Zenkichi. Yo, you guys having fun? We are. Oh yeah? Good to hear. Listen, I wanted to ask you guys a favor. I'm already investigating in Sapporo, but before you leave Sendai, I'd like you to stop by Toho University. Tomorrow, there's going to be a session at the Mount Aoba campus. Session? The CEO of Medis is holding a lecture there. I'm still looking into them at the moment, but the more info we have, the better. I'd like you to attend the lecture in my place. All right. I'm glad you get it. And just so we're clear, don't draw any unnecessary attention to yourselves. Just go and see if the CEO says anything strange. Do you have a name? His name is Akira Konoe. And he looks like a capable CEO. I'll give him that. Anyway, I'm going to be counting on you kids. And again, try not to get carried away, all right? So what did he want? I told everyone about Zenkichi's call. Let me get this straight. This guy's running the company that made Emma? This might be a good opportunity to learn something new. Hmm. I suppose we'll find out at the lecture tomorrow morning. Guess break time's over. Time to get back to work. As you all know, life is just an ongoing series of daily decisions. What's for breakfast? What should I wear today? Every day begins with these insignificant little dilemmas. But then there comes a time to decide your field of study, your place of employment, who you're going to marry. And it's these choices that matter. Yes, people are always looking for the best choice or the correct answer. Madis seeks to provide it for everyone through the power of AI. Emma is a state-of-the-art AI designed to integrate itself into our everyday lives. By gathering and analyzing extraordinary amounts of data with perfect precision, Emma can help everyone make the best choices. Capable CEO seems pretty spot on. Wow, he's so composed. He's practically overflowing with confidence. Look how clearly he states his company's outlook and principles. He's got everyone's attention. You're right. He's not saying anything particularly suspicious, though. Well, thanks to Emma, Medisa's stocks have shot way up. You can bet they're one of Japan's biggest enterprises right now. That said, I feel like a company with this much going for it wouldn't have much to gain from changing people's hearts. Perhaps, but that doesn't change the fact that Emma is still a key factor in the jails. 
It is through Emma that people are allowed access. Right. Medis is connected to all of this one way or another, be it directly or indirectly. Hey, do you think there's a real culprit behind all of this? Like, some kind of mastermind? I do, actually, yes. I do. I think so, too. Even if we beat the monarchs, change their hearts, and free everyone's desires, the jails don't disappear. Uh, uh, uh Morgana's catching up to me. There's gotta be something keeping them here. So you're saying the real culprit's the one doing that? I don't know. But do you remember how even the monarchs themselves didn't know much about Emma? That's right. Alice and Natsume said the same things in their testimonies. And if that's the case, then the monarchs might not be the only ones manipulating Emma. Which means it could be someone at Medis. Or our mystery observer. Or our head honcho down there. Or perhaps someone completely different. Yeah, well, we just gotta stick to what Gramps was telling us, right? All we can do is keep solving cases and collect more info. As long as the Phantom Thieves of Hearts do what they do best, we'll set this shit straight. Wow, Ryuji. That was pretty insightful. I'm surprised. He's right. And in that sense, attending this lecture is a valuable use of our time. Let's make sure we pay attention all the way to the end. Yo, how long was I out? So, what did the dude say? Ugh, can I smack you? Well, he didn't exactly say anything out of the ordinary. Then again, I wouldn't expect him to trip up that easily. Well, I'm starving, so maybe we should just head back? That guy was talking for friggin' ever. Hey guys, that stuff you said earlier, was all of that true? Huh? Are you really the Phantom Thieves of Hearts? The hell, how did you hear all of that? Also, this is the second time we meet, met this character and I had a thought that this character is either or both, but either the person that's monitoring the people so far, like the one that is keeping tabs on them or they're the person that made Sophia. I don't think she's the one that is behind everything because as far as we know so far, she has no connection to Medis. She's a she said she's a instructor here at this university, right? So I think it's more likely that she's either keeping tabs on the people or she made Sophia, one or the other. And the reason I think that is because when I was editing the video earlier, I noticed that she brought up cognition in that conversation that she had at the restaurant. And if she's talking about cognition, then that means she's thinking about the metaverse type stuff. So we'll see. What? You're the woman from the Beef Tongue restaurant. Oh, Ichinose-san, right? You heard all that? Well, the thing is, I'm really good at picking up when a cat meows. Honestly, I found that way more interesting than Kanoe's lecture. Mona! B me? But you guys are the ones she overheard! The hell are we gonna do? Better play innocent. Whoa, stop, stop. It's alright. This place will be closing up soon. Let's talk more outside. To fix this, but I